right, so I'm out in the shop today and I'm going to st start trimming down the Y datum. It's an inch and a quarter piece of stock and I need it to be an inch and an eighth. Now, this is probably not the best way to do this. Uh, however, I only need this edge here to be straight and this is going to go up against the dovetail which is already not a perfect edge so uh, I found out when doing the X and the Y that you still have to kind of uh, shim it up a little bit along the way so I think that I can machine this an eighth of an inch off of this and get it good enough to where I can still get my datums uh, mounted straight if it doesn't work and they come out really messed up I'll just have to start over order some more and uh, try to figure out a different route to go but I think this will work so let's give it a try cut that down an eighth of an inch all right I've got it repositioned in the vise and now I'm just going to keep going on until I get the whole uh, thing machined out So the last little bit, I had about three inches there I had to trim up, so that was the best way I could see to do it, so uh, there we go, we got it all trimmed up, get it out, clean it up, and see if it's going to work. I'm pretty happy with the tolerances that we got on the datums. Next I need to work on uh, getting prepped and ready to install the rails. The rails are going to sit on there like so. There's plenty of clearance here. A uh, good sixteenth of an inch clearance here on the Y. And we're just going to basically do the same thing we did with the datums. We'll clamp it in place and bore the holes and then thread it. But before I install these, what I want to do is you can see that this is fairly flush here with the side. I want to make a clamp or a keeper to kind of put pressure up against the rail so that it stays up against the datum. This will add uh, some rigidity to the overall system. On the y-axis the rails are flush here so I could use some straight bar stock. I picked up some half inch by half inch angle and the plan was to uh, machine this down so that it just has a little bit protruding 
and then bore some holes and use that sort of as a clamp and that will just kind of go up against there like so put pressure on there and keep it pushed up against the datum now doesn't really need to be an angle piece for the Y because they're flush however on the X axis it does need to go over a little bit and on the Z axis I believe they're about flush too or maybe just a little inset so I'm going to work on these clamps next and then after that we're going to start installing the rails uh, really happy so far uh, everything seems to be turning out really nice I can already tell that it's going to be really slick once it's installed and it's going to be really smooth so there was a few things that I learned installing these datums along the way uh, overall I think there was like 90 something holes that I bored drilled and tapped and along the way you got to keep clamping and keep everything in place so that it doesn't move while you're trying to get uh, your holes bored and threaded so what I used was to get the hole started I, I used these zip bits and these are just retractable door hinge type bits I used two sizes I used a 764 and I also used an 1164 now the 1164 is quite a bit bigger and it's way too big but what it did was it allowed me to get a nice centered divot so I just kind of got it started just to give me a little divot in there similar to a center punch then I came back with the smaller 764 and that kept that kept it really nice and centered for me you can see how it, the 1164 leaves a nice big divot and then you can come back with a smaller one and bore your hole now once I did that and got my holes bored with the zip bits I came back with the appropriate uh, drill bit for the thread size actually this is a 964 and I just came back and drilled the hole so then I came back and just tapped it with an M4 and then installed my socket head screws one other tip that I want to point out that was brought to my attention by a friend of mine Ian is one of the dilemmas when doing it the way I did is you don't know you really need a nice straight reference edge and this particular edge here may or may not have been machined as cleanly as say the inter angle of the dovetail here so he suggested uh, that if you have a precision ground rod that you can lay in here like like this this will then transfer this machined dovetail edge out to here and you can use then a one two three block and slide it along this edge and then you know for sure that at least you're referencing off the dovetail now of course if you could just simply lay this table up onto a, say a bridge port and machine your datum into your table well then that's ideal as well uh, this particular method was for a way to convert your meal without really destroying any of the castings and also getting you a surface in which you can lay your rail against now the rails one of the installation methods for the rail is just simply to lay it up there and then bolt it down as long as you have your secondary rail or your sub rail parallel within seven tenths of an inch it should be fine the datum is just a little added support in case there is some sort of uh, crash you don't want you know it just gives it a little bit more rigidity so that you know your rail is not going to get uh, twisted or moved around uh, in the event of some kind of uh, crash thanks guys for watching the video 
hopefully these tips will help you if you decide to do uh, a datum installation like this. I appreciate Ian for the tip of using the precision rod to transfer the uh, straight edge from the dovetail to the outside of the rod. That's a really uh, good tip. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to comment. Thanks for watching the videos. Stay tuned next week uh, where we're going to start trying to uh, prepare for installation of the rails. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and most importantly, be safe.